Hello dear friends, greetings from Munich. Today we have a special video. Uh, since I found out that I'm going to come to Munich, I knew 100% that I want to visit this place. It's called Dachau Concentration Camp and it's the first concentration camp ever built by the Nazis. It was built in 1933 and was used to uh, punish all those ones who were against the system. It was used as a Jewish extermination, um, as a Jew extermination camp from 1942. So this means that for almost 10 years, this place, like I said, was used just, just to punish the ones who were against the, the Nazi regime. We are going to do this in a different way. Right now, I'm at the end of the tour. I'm at the gas chambers and I'm going to present on a very short unedited video I'm going to walk you around this place and to its most important uh, uh, parts like I've said these are the gas chambers it's very bad because now it's starting to rain you can see here bodies found by the Americans in 1945 when they arrived here uh, let's see what is this the chambers were used to disinfect clothing with prussic acid poison gas Iclombe. a canister of poison gas was placed inside and opened after the chamber was sealed closed there was a ventilator into the attic above each chamber to ventilate the chamber afterwards uh, the best thing is that I'm all alone in this place. I don't think there's a single, single person. And yes, we're lucky. It started to rain. So from here, I have to go through the rain, my camera. And you come to this area. Here you have the waiting room where the prisoners were informed that they are going to be taken to the showers. We all know what this meant. There you have the second room where prisoners were undressed and they were told there are the, the showers. So there they were telling you, here they were undressing you, yes? Ah, yes, yes, so they were living the clothes there, but they were being informed over there. Okay, I don't understand, but it doesn't matter. And here, you have the gas chamber. Well, this place is so eerie, really. This is the gas chamber. You have to imagine here around 200, 300 people, all stacked, pushed, squeezed to the wall. This door closed, it's bang, it's bang, sealed. Absolutely nobody, of course, no light. And through here, they were putting uh, those Ziklon Be. There, there, there. There and there. And if these didn't do the job, they could also throw them through here from outside. Like if they still heard screams, put a few more over here, and you were dead. You were gone. These drainage holes are for the bodily fluids. Just imagine from 200, 300 people, uh, blood, piss, shit, and whatever. Sweat. Oh. Okay. Here, there was a doctor, and the doctor was inspecting the bodies to see that people have died. And then they were taking the bodies from here and putting them in the uh, cremation area. As you can see, these have no exhaust because the... How do you call these things? Shh. No, not the, sm the smoke, not the smoke. Ah, damn, my, my English is so bad. Uh, this wasn't going outside, it was going inside, down to the ground. And you see that you have these hooks there, for example, those were used, uh, they were putting their prisoners who were not behaving. Hmm. Okay. 
something was written here. Each of the four furnaces would, could cremate two to three corpses at once. The ovens were connected to the chimney by an underground canal. Most hangings, uh -huh. most hangings were carried out here. The victims were hanged directly in front of the burning ovens. So they were putting you here and imagine the heat coming from these ovens. Disgusting. Okay, so the rain stopped. There were another three people who entered. I think I've been here for the last two and a half hours and I think I've seen only maybe 15 people but I came here very early. I came at around 8.45. The place opened at 8 uh, at 9. Okay, so now we have to uh, reconstruct um, the path of how you were getting here but we are going to do it uh, backwards. I am going to tell you now something that I dislike about the place. It's about the audio guide system. They give you these remote controls and of course that because of coronavirus you don't have any headphones you just have to keep this to your ear and talk. Like we were doing 20 years ago they could have easily invented the nap or whatever i don't know it would have been 10 times easier but for me with the camera with this with the phone you also have a map you have to take care of it so that was pretty tedious but now we are in the barracks area which is also a very very interesting one so here we have 34 barracks or what's left of them uh, these barracks will build between 1933 and 1939 but you have to understand the fact that when the americans came and released all the prisoners at the end of the world war ii in 1945 they came here and they had to burn down absolutely every and every and each and single one of these barracks because you just have to imagine the fact that this place was designed for 6,000 people but in any at any given point here there were more than 40,000 people um, which means that in one of these barracks there were a couple of thousands and uh, of course because the situation was so bad and because people were coming and dying coming and dying this um, was infected with all sorts of disease it was huge infestation very 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 bad and when the americans came of course they said we, we cannot do anything we just need to burn absolutely everything down apart from the symbolistic uh, measure of uh, action of uh, destroying them there was also a more practical practical side what i like about this place well like i think it's a bit of an overstatement but um, for me it seems very interesting the architectural part of this place like it's huge it's absolutely absolutely huge and it's not even the biggest concentration camp there is uh, after this i'll go to poland so you are going to see also auschwitz but you have to imagine that this part was full 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 of people we'll go to the assembly area later so in that part is the entrance this is called the death road because once you were on this road the chance of going back were almost non-existent we all know that this concentration camp even though they were advertised as uh, having the purpose of re-education of the prisoner this was totally bullshit once you entered here you were fucked so here you have a christian monument which has something that whoa the, the, uh, this was the moment when I said, oh my god, yeah, these, these people, they were very, very, very bad, the incarnation of evil. So there you have a depiction of uh, Jesus Christ with his arms opened. And here there used to be also a big statue made of uh, iron with his hands like this. So you are coming from there, you know that you are going to be killed, but you are coming and you are entering... Uh, the embrace of Jesus Christ so you had to accept the idea that you are going to die but you are going to go to heaven to meet with Jesus Christ and God so you had to be very very happy and satisfied about this which for me this place is the incarnation of 
pure, pure evil. But the monument itself is not so bad. If you compare it to the ones, to the one designed for the Jewish people. Look here. So for me, this, this building, the way it's shaped, uh, the color, the fact that here, for example, it's at the same level with, uh, with the rest of the prison encampment. Here, we have to go down. Like the humiliation towards the Jewish people is... <sighs> I'm telling you guys that for, for me, these places are really proof to me how shitty we can be as human beings. So you are going down, down, everything in black, dark. Here you have uh, the star of David, David star. You enter. Look at the walls. Like you, you don't feel you're in a monument, you feel like you're in a cave here. And there you have access to light. That monument here is the symbolism for uh, the Nazi party. And you are basically looking up, up. And they were looking down on you. Whew. I just have one question. <laughs> Why? And the people who are actually coming from here just imagine the, the immensity of this place. It's absolutely huge. You're coming here outside. You could easily see all the barracks. You are being placed in the barracks based on your social status. I know, I'm joking. Based on what you've done. And also, of course, where you are for, where, where you are from. If, for example, you were a normal German citizen who had the courage to say something bad against the regime, you're placed there in the front, starting with barracks number three. Number one, number two, were used. One of them was the library. One was the library. Number two was the infirmary. And number three was the brothel, because women here were forced uh, to mate. Of course. This is how it was called, mate, uh, in order to create more labor force for the, for the regime. And from number three or four, or from, from number four, uh, like I said, if you were a German who just didn't like so much Hitler's ideas, it was very easy you were placed there. You had the chance to redeem yourself, you had the chance to be freed. If you were Polish, or Jew, or you are from the Soviet Union, or you are a prisoner, you are placed further in the back. The further you are placed from the entrance, the less likely you were to, ever, to be freed ever again. So if you were placed here, it was 100% you are going to be killed. So there, there were basically no chances of... Um, to, to, to ever leave this place. I just hope it doesn't start raining again because the weather is pretty... Mm, the weather is pretty shitty today. And here, to the left and to the right, you have two replicas of the ones filled with people, barracks. These were built somewhere in the 60s because um, they wanted to showcase, they wanted to portrait the way people were living here but again thanks to our special friend corona fucking virus you're not allowed to go here inside to go inside here which i don't understand because there is a museum behind this and in the museum it's allowed to enter but i'm going to show you how people were living so here you have the bathroom this is a sink people were gathered around to wash i don't imagine that there were tons of water but they had some. This I don't know. And 
Uh, okay, so here are the beds. In one of these beds, so just you see here are two of them, but in one of them, so basically in all this part here that you see, uh, they had to leave more than twelve uh, than six people. Sorry, windy. So six people here. For me, it looks like there's room for one person. I don't think I would fit here, but they had to put six six persons here. The biggest problem was with the diseases because what's a Nazi regime without disease? So just imagine like this, six people there, six people there, six people there. The main problem was the area. Many people, almost 60% of the people living in these barracks had the area. So if you were down there and somebody from up had chronic diarrhea, diarrhea not diarrhea, diarrhea, just imagine you were in for a very, very, very shitty night. Let's see here. Now, these ones, I don't know what exactly uh, they mean. But yeah, me, I'm just trying to imagine, I'm trying to multiply these barracks by 17, because like I said, there were 17 here and 17 over there here are odd numbers and on the other side were even numbers uh, the barracks were 10 meters wide and 100 meters long and here to continue to continue our trip ah you see now there are some people gathering we have here the assembly area which is very important i'm going to talk about it in a bit but back there is the museum which even though it's interesting like I said, you enter through that side and you go out through here. I stayed around one hour to read all the information that we're given there, which is pretty, pretty interesting, especially if you are, um, especially if you are a history geek. Um, yes, yeah, so inside people are allowed, but in every room they're allowed like four, five people, so you have to wait. So I only read the ones that were uh, accessible to the general, to the general public, because I didn't want to sit and wait every two rooms okay so here you have the assembly area which um, could fit more than 50,000 people 40,000 people died here approximately in Dachau concentration camp and uh, you have to imagine this every morning at 5 30 a.m. all the people in the barracks were gathered here and counted at night every day 6 30 p.m. All the people from the barracks were gathered here and counted. Also, here, executions were taking place. For example, let's imagine you were there and your friend was sick and he fainted and you wanted to help him. There is a very big chance that you are going to be executed, that you were executed. But your friend, maybe... Uh, wouldn't have been executed because the idea of the regime is to punish the ones who are weak. So, him fainting, of course, it was a proof that he was weak. But you helping him, it was a proof that you are even weaker. So, you were immediately killed. Which means that the idea of friendship, the idea of love, the idea of respect meant absolutely nothing. Here is where the general stayed exactly here on top of this stone and he was looking and talking to almost 50,000 people Oof. and here we are at the end well at the beginning of my journey at the end of your journey um, here you have the well-known gate I'm going to fail so much on this. Arbeit, Arbeit macht frei, which means um, freedom through work. Like you could achieve freedom if you were willing to work as hard as possible. And that is it. I've done the tour now in like 15 minutes, but me, I've spent more than three hours here. Uh, as a conclusion, the place is nice. Ah, what's uh, very important to know 
that you don't have to pay anything the entrance is free you only have to pay for this for uh, four euros and you also have to leave a warranty you leave your um, id card or passport or driver's license or whatever mm, if i were to compare this place to s21 prison in phnom penh i think that one uh, got to me a bit more i don't know why because it the, the events that were happening there were a bit more random here it was cruelty at its finest but over there i think the evil was even even <laughs> stronger uh, how did i arrive here from munich central station i took a train i paid 11 euros round trip from uh, from here you, you just need to take a bus uh, the price of the bus is included in the um, uh, in the 11 euros i paid and let's say from munich central station to here maybe it was around 35 minutes or something like that. The place is open from 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. I think that uh, it would have been really interesting to be able to enter in the in the barracks, but unfortunately, that wasn't the case. Either way, if you like this video, guys, please just hit a like or a dislike. And uh, if you love my work, please consider subscribing. Thank you very much. I have another two more days in Munich and then we're going i have no idea where but up until so far i'm totally totally in love with germany no no not because of this no, because of the people because of the food because of the weather everything is nice like i i really really love this country either way thank you very much for watching this video bye bye and see you in the next one